Yo, what's up guys? Split 2 is here for Season 14, and there's been some item changes, some rune changes, and there's some new best builds, some new go-to items for Fiora, and I want to show you guys what they are, so let's jump right into it. First and foremost, I want to jump right into the runes, because I feel like runes is such a commonly asked questions in the comments and on the stream, and I really just want to tell you what these runes are for. I don't really want to dive too deep into it. Grasp is what we're going to start with. This is an introductory rune for Fiora. This is something you take when you're trying to learn Fiora, or if you're playing into uncomfortable matchups. Personally, I only use Grasp into Gragas. I think Gragas is a tough lane. I think Grasp helps me sustain and survive it. Grasp should be taken if you need to survive the lane or it's a very unfavorable matchup and you feel like you're going to lose the lane. That's all that this is really for. You really want to ease your way into PTA and conquer. And for the grass secondary runes, I like to take inspiration and biscuits. I think that's the best thing that you can really do is just take inspiration. Take something like biscuits, boots, maybe you can take cosmic insight. But other than that, this is basically going to be the rune page that you'll take for grasp. Now, when we jump into PTA and conquer, PTA is going to be the first one. PTA has changed now. It uh, is now more like conquer instead of giving your enemy champion a debuff when you hit them with the three consecutive attacks it now does not proc the debuff instead it just gives you a personal amplification of your damage by eight percent until you are out of combat for five seconds so it's kind of like a weaker conquer but basically what you're looking for when you're going to press the attack is this is more of a lane dominance type of rune early lane and mid game that is what you're going to get the most value out of press the attack for so this is going to be a rune that you're going to take when you take ignite or if you play into somebody like darius riven renekton those types of champions and then when we look at conquer this is the scaling rune so when we take conquer we more need to think about how long is this game going to go when he gets past 30 minutes that's when conquer is basically max value once you hit level 18 that's when the scaling ends up reaching its max potential on how much attack damage you're going to gain per stack but also think about the laning phase and think about hey am i actually going to get all 12 stacks of conquer while i'm trading with this enemy if the answer is no then you probably don't need conquer unless the enemy team has a lot of tanks and you know that you're going to be hitting the enemies a lot and typically fighting with full stacks of conquer now when you take conquer conquer or press the attack i really like to just match with resolve tree there's a lot of great things here i really like to go like bone plating or second wind depending if it's a ranged opponent or a melee and then take overgrowth i think overgrowth is really great and if you don't want overgrowth i think that you can take demolish instead so those are the runes that i like to take and i just want to keep that really short and simple and now i want to jump right into the items so before we even talk about the builds i want to make sure that everybody knows that the situational items are going to be these are going to be like your fourth fifth slot um your last two items basically these are going to be items like hole breaker sterix death stance maul and Spirit Shoujin, and then GA as well. Those are like the six items that you can build in those last two item slots that you can use to fit into the game that you're playing. So I've got four great builds for you guys to use in your next ranked game or normal game, whatever you want to do. In split one, we were kind of just going the same build almost every game. Clips was a flexible item that we could use, but you typically were running like Ravenous Triforce into Holebreaker Sterix or Death Stance Maul, something around that nature. Now we have a little bit more flexibility, which is awesome. So I want to show you guys the four best builds for split two on fiora the first one is going to be just the standard really so it's going to be ravenous into triforce into situational items so that third fourth for the slot is actually there is no core three when it comes to this for first build it's literally just the ravenous and the triforce that make this build special so instead of grabbing something that's max ad for the third item we go straight into situational build path right for our third fourth and fifth items so that means we could take death stance if enemy has a lot of ad or if we're split pushing and we're going up against somebody that's riven renekton trinomir so on and so forth an ad opponent or we could go maul third item instead and we could use that against like ap laners or if we're having to split against them or if they have a lot of ap damage maybe like a nidalee's running around the map and doing a ton of damage as well just stuff like that or you could even take sterics hole breaker or spear shoujin spear shoujin is meant for if you're hitting the enemies a lot this is really just like standard split one build path so what i'm going to say with this is it's going to be ravenous triforce into death stance but it's a flexible third pick ravenous triforce is the core build and then you flex it into the game that you are playing now when we come down to the second build this is where it gets a little bit fun i think this is a really fun one in split two for the second build here we're going to be going ravenous triforce into bloodthirster so this is an awesome build path uh, a little bit more consistent because it has the triforce and you know speaking of that first build we talked about that's going to be your most consistent meta build now we're going to kind of reach away from the meta and walk away from it a little bit and try something a little bit new by grabbing this bloodthirster that has 80 ad on it so with just these three items you know we're looking at a plus of over 200 ad from those and that's absolutely awesome you know that is what we want and we're going to get 30 percent lifesteal just from the ravenous and the bloodthirster and then we have our triforce that is giving us you know the spell blade the ability haze a little bit of attack speed a little bit of hp gives us the movement speed on hit so overall it's just a great item for fiora and it's a very consistent build path now you can also be feel a little if you feel a little bit more comfortable playing fiora you definitely want to try to switch it up a little 
little bit, in my opinion. I think that the best way to actually build this uh, build path is to take the Ravenous first, get the Phage from Triforce, then finish your Bloodthirster, and then go back and finish Triforce third item. So it would be like Ravenous, Phage, Bloodthirster, finish Triforce. And then you go into your situational items for the game that you're playing into. I think that this build is really strong right now. I think it's super OP. I think that you should jump on it immediately. Anything with Bloodthirster because it probably will get nerfed soon. Now we're going to jump into the third build. Now this is, you know, maximum damage, super fun, more durable than you think, and very exciting build to play. Uh, this one's going to be Ravenous into Eclipse into Bloodthirster. Thirster. So this is 70 AD from Ravenous, 70 AD from Eclipse, and 80 AD from Bloodthirster. Now you think, you know, I don't have any HP from this. I, I don't have any resistances. Am I going to be too squishy? Well, believe it or not, you're actually going to be a lot more durable than you think. You're getting, you know, 210 AD from this build. You're getting 30% lifesteal, and then you're getting the shield that comes with Eclipse as well. So you're more durable than you think because when you're playing Fiora, typically your offense is your best defense. Being able to one-shot your opponents in 1v1s or 1v2s, it really takes away from the enemy damage when they're already dead before they can react to you. I would say that this is the biggest flex of a build that you could go right now in Fiora. I think it's very high risk. I think it's very high reward. And I think that you can absolutely just demolish enemies, enemy teams with this, uh, with this build. But it is definitely a high confidence build. This is something that you want to work your way into feeling comfortable playing a build with this much power because you're right there isn't that much defense to it and you're using your offensive power and as your defense basically but i think this build is super fun and if you don't feel comfortable with it i highly recommend trying it out in a normal game first because it might sound crazy because it's just completely max ad but you would be surprised at how good this build really is now for the fourth build this one is a little bit different this one's more for ranged opponents so it's a little bit different you're definitely going to want to take pta with this but with the way that bork has been changed i think that bork is much better for fiora it's got 55 5 AD, 30% uh, attack speed, and 10% life steal. And I think that it's really nice because it has that Clawing Shadows active to it where you hit an enemy and then it slows them. So this is a really good item against ranged opponents. So I think if you're going to go the Bork build path, you more take Bork and then you go Ravenous Hydra for the wave clear and then you grab a Triforce, which is going to amp your move speed while slowing the enemy's move speed with the Blade of the Ruined King. So this is more of a niche build, but I do think that is really good into ranged opponents. It kind of makes it so that you don't really have to take Ghost against them, but you also have a lot of burst, big damage, and it's hard for the enemy to get away from you. I really like the Bork, Ravenous, and Triforce into ranged opponents in people like Kale, Vayne, you know, when people play Varus top, even like a Gnar in the top lane, those types of lanes are really good. Now I do want to throw in, this is a bonus, b -b -b bonus build right here. This is something that I've played in like a couple games, but I think it's a ton of fun. I don't really think it's too insanely viable, but if you are going grasp, I think that you could have a lot of fun trying this build out. And that is going to be, and keep in mind, you need the full build to make this work, but it's going to be Ravenous into Spirit Shoujin, into Sterics, hole breaker and then you're going to end the build with the overlord's blood mail which is the brand new item that came out this split for bruisers and juggernauts so this item is kind of like the old uh titanic it's got that tyranny passive to it that you gain two percent of your bonus health as attack damage but something else that it has on it is retribution which is gain up to 10 percent increased attack damage based on your percent missing health so when you have this build fully built and you have all these items and let's say you have overgrowth as well you're going to have a little bit more here but this item can give you all the way up to 130 30 AD all by itself. So with this build specifically that I just mentioned, we're still going to take Ravenous, which is really great. But with this build that we just mentioned right now, we have 40 AD plus 35 plus 50. And that is without getting any grass procs or anything like that, or getting any uh, HP from overgrowth. So I think that's more of like a meme build, but I think that uh, it's a lot of fun if you're going grass. I've tried it a couple times when I went grass, but I actually really enjoyed it. I think I thought it was really good. And not to mention, you know, the demolish proc that you're going to get <laughs> with all that bonus HP too. 4k bonus HP with around a little over 500 AD on that build. It is a good time. Vitals reaching all the way up to 18% uh, with that one. But obviously games don't typically go that long. So you're more looking to uh, have that maximum damage through your first three items. You're really looking for the core build and that's why it's it's called a core build because typically the game is going to be over around that time that we get it or that's going to be our biggest power spike when we get those builds and there you go guys that is the video those are your four best fewer builds for split two of season 14 plus the bonus build too if you guys want to have some fun so hopefully this video helps you guys out in your rank climb hope you guys are getting that lp and i hope you guys reach your goals in split two Till next time guys peace out love you bye bye